Welcome and thank you for joining me. This is Lavina Archers and we're live streaming. It's a regular Sunday live stream. If you would like to join our Sunday live stream, all you have to do is go to humandesign.live and in our network, I'm going to show you here where we have our events on the left-hand side of the page. You'll see we have something called Sunday sessions and this is what I'm calling neutrino news you can use. I am inspired by looking at the transits and I don't uh, script anything that comes out of my mouth. It's best if I just let it flow. And sometimes it will be more personal than others. It depends on the transits really. And my whole entire aim for these sessions is to be able to empower you to learn how to look at the transits and to learn human design from a visceral standpoint, as in an experiential position that you take on looking at what the transits are doing right now and how that's translated into your body. So all of us are gonna be filtering, filtering the neutrino stream all the time. There's a data stream of the neutrinos that are going through the planets and then filtering within our bodies. And each of us are gonna experience it in different ways. So my focus on Sundays is to help those of you understand your body graph from a personal perspective. I have personal perspective, so it's really easy for me to get into that perspective of what it might be like. I have the strength of imagination, channel of recognition, a design of focused energy, which is about feelings. So I can share my feelings with you as far as me projecting into what it might be like to experience this transit that we're looking at. So I'm going to be using, oh, again, if you want to sign up for the events, just please go ahead, go to humandesign.live, click on events, and you can see we've got our Sunday sessions um, for the foreseeable future now. Sometimes I don't feel well enough to be able to do these live free events. So my apologies if you show up someday and it's not there. Um, it just means I had a really rough, rough morning that time. So I'm going to just double check my chat here. Um, let's see, my chat is missing. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Hi, Sammy. I, I have my camera on today. It's nice to see you. So I just want to welcome Carol, Julia, Carla, Gajela, Melanie, Nils, Nina, RE, not sure who that is, but thank you for joining us, Ronell, and of course, Sammy. Thank you so much, you guys. Nice to have your support. Hi. And I'm going to uh, do my best not to look at the chat because that always distracts me from my focus. And I would like to invite you to print out your body graph. So we'll start in just another minute. Please do have your body graph for these Sunday sessions. It's really helpful if you take a look at the body graph from the perspective of what is the transit doing to you right now. And to do that, you need to have your body graph in front of you, unless you've, like me, memorized it because you have so many years of looking at that dang thing, trying to figure out how it works. So do get your body graph printed out. It's best if you don't have it on um, a computer screen or something, because if you have it printed out, and all you have to do, by the way, you go to mybodygraph.com and you look at your chart. So I'm just going to get my chart up for you and show you how you would download and print that out. So here's my body graph and under the my body graph section, if you click on this my body graph right here where the little drop down arrow is, click on that, you can click download. And then that download will be available as an image on your computer screen and you can print that out to a page. So you just hit that little print button or however it is that you're deciding to print it out. You might get a poster of it. I like having posters of the human design system because it's so viscerally, viscerally and visually stimulating. So we're going to go back to the just now transit report. So in my body graphs, this is free, by the way, if you want to use it, it is by the official source of the human design system. It's jovianarchive.com, who runs and operates this website, free to use. Now the section that I'm going to go to right now is not free. It's an additional upgrade. It's not that much though. And it, it's not a recurring, you know, subscription either. You can just buy it, you got it. So you go to new, and we're gonna to go to the Just Now chart. Now the Just Now should be free, but this part down here I'm gonna show you is not, it's an additional upgrade. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a look at this body graph together. And I'm gonna do my best to explain it from a newcomer's perspective. So for those of you who have been studying human design for a while, you might hear me say a lot of things that you already know. 
do stay tuned to and present to what's happening in your body, any recognitions that you have as I describe what's going on in the transits to see if you can recognize or identify with what the energies are doing. These planets are our rave teachers. If you're new to human design, welcome. We are nine centered humans. The voice that gave Ra this material called us rave, R-A-V-E. So the planets themselves are teachers. They're our rave teachers. They teach us, they help us go to school in this life. So I'm going to show you on this body graph what you can see if we take a circle of the global conditioning pattern. Okay, the global conditioning pattern for today is the channel of synthesis, a design of sensitivity. And this brings the pressure to recognize what resources and what principles are correct to utilize to support the tribe. So it's about having the availability of resources so that all of our tribal people, all of us get what we need in order to survive and thrive on the material plane. This is about materialism. Ultimately, that's where it leads to. So down here, we have people who are very sensitive Sensitive. This channel brings on, like my friend Sammy says, who has this channel, the waterworks, meaning you will cry if you're very sensitive and triggered. Most likely this week, you'll probably cry. Now, the sun moved into um, gate 49 this week, just today. Actually, you can see the first line. We always go from one through six throughout the week of the same gate. So the sun being in that gate, in the availability for the potential awareness to recognize what principles are correct for us to be sensitive to, to either accept or reject an other or whoever it is that we're um, giving our attention and our affection to. This is a projected channel, which you know loves to have that focus, that singular focus into that one other person at a time. So we have the sun, 70% of the neutrino stream that is bombarding all of us right now is broadcasted or emanated from the sun and it went through this small little portion in space where it's being affected by Jupiter on the other side of the channel. So the channels are the life force in the body graph. The channels show us a relationship between one center, one function in our body, and another center, another function in our body. So we have today Jupiter and Saturn in relationship to each other. And that's what's creating the channel of sensitivity. That's what's creating the pressure to be sensitive to the needs of others, the pressure to get triggered when there's a little tiny thing that happens and you get kind of upset, but yeah, no, it goes away. But then another thing happens and then another thing happens. And then you're like, ah! <laughs> you know, but this one, it depends on your design. This one, if you have the entire stream of sensitivity, you might really have some kind of ugh, like really uncomfortable, hmm, potentially in an explosion. We've got a couple of different activations that are um, manifested. And depending on your design, you might have that explosion of, you know, this deep adrenalized bitterness that gets to this point of eruption. And then, you know, you just, you cry, you get it out and you feel better, right? So this is the emotional wave that we're dealing with. They're all dealing with this week. Okay. So I'm going to um, just switch this over. Okay. I can't hide my chat, unfortunately, not ignoring you on purpose, my friends, just want to stay focused on what I'm doing here, but I will check with, if you have any questions about your design and relationship to the transits, please do use the Q and a box. The chat button is for you guys to talk to each other if you want to. Okay. Cause I know a lot of students, my personal students are in this course, in this class, this Sunday session, and you might feel like chatting with each other. Okay. So down back to what's going on here. I'm just gonna click on this and you can see we actually have Mercury here in relationship as well. Now, Mercury, if you know your astrology, is currently going through retrograde. What does that mean? It appears that it's going backwards in the sky. To us, it, the, the gate activation, it's, it's not forward movement as in one, two, three, four, five, six, it's backward movement. And so now we have Mercury, our communication and thinking, which is in the gate of principles as well. And so if I click up here to show you what is causing this extreme vacillation between this overly sensitive 
or maybe not, you know, I'm insecure. I'm looking down at the details. Oh, happy first line day, by the way. First line days are great for getting into the details. And you might notice I get really detailed on first line days. It resonates with my unconscious mercury. Can't help it. So what we're looking at is the first line is the foundation or the essence of any hexagram that you look at. The first line always speaks to the nature of what is at the bottom of things when it comes to that hexagram. So let's take a look at that and let's see what this hexagram has to teach us today. The sun in this hexagram, the broadcasting of the of the life force and the core essence that we're all experiencing. This is called the law of necessity. And when we see a bold blue line overarching these um, keynotes that Ra has given us, that means that that's something that isn't necessarily there. It's something that we're learning. If it's in your design, we're, you're learning that over time. You're maturing through that process. So because Jupiter in relationship to this gate and line pulls it up into what we call the exaltation. I'm just going to read the second sentence here to help us understand the awareness that the potential of a principle is based on it being accepted as viable. So that 49, which is the fear of um, nature. This is the gate of principles. This is the gate of revolution. This is the gate of divorce. This is availability to recognize because it's a projected channel, whether or not a principle and here the law of necessity, a principle is going to be accepted as viable or not. Now on the other side of the spectrum, we have the extreme ends of the spectrum that's being that the sun is being pulled into because that's where the sun pulls it into detriment. So if the sun goes through this gate in that line, it's always going to pull down into the challenge. When we say the word detriment, it's not that it's bad. It's just that it's more challenging, particularly to the global collective, the way that we judge things with our conscious thinking mind. We're always judging good, bad, right, wrong, this, that, that kind of thing. What you want to look at here is that oversensitivity to rejection that can turn a principle into a crusade might be something that you experience, particularly if you're open in the solar plexus, this is the solar plexus center or center for emotional intelligence. If you're open here, what can tend to happen when a global conditioning pattern, a whole channel comes in, now you're amplifying it. And if you're very sensitive to your body and your, your moods and your uh, experiences in life, you might find yourself turning on the waterworks and going, why? And this is why. Okay, so take a deep breath. And remember this too shall pass. It's not something that you have to do anything about. That's the most important thing. When you're looking at a transit, it's like now you can see what the programming is doing and why you might be behaving in certain ways or why you might be feeling certain things, feeling sensitive, feeling moody. We'll get to that in a moment. Feeling pressured, feeling stressed. This is the pressure for physical stress. You might have issues with... Um, the physical, emotional expression of that stress or not. You might really want to clamp it down because it's your pattern to always clamp down your emotions and clamp down your feelings. And now you're having problems with having to go to the bathroom all the time because your body has to get rid of that energy somehow, some way. And so you're going to go pee. <laughs> this is where we release the uh, wastes of the body. And in this stream, it's about water. So it's about going to the bathroom. You find yourself going to the bathroom a lot and peeing a lot to get rid of that waste. It's just one of the things that we get to watch, okay? Part of the movie. So let's take a look now. Instead of going into the earth where that 70% of that energy is grounded into the earth, I'm going to skip to where we look at the pressure that's creating this channel. And again, that's two different places. So Mercury in retrograde, we have popular discontent. This was one of Ra's gates, the only gate he had in an undefined solar plexus. And this is one of the things that he sold us on was the wisdom of popular discontent, meaning there's a potential insensitivity to reject failed principles or relationships. And on the other side, there's an insensitivity in rejection and in rejecting. So I imagine if I was a lover of Ra Uruhu back in the day, I might have been really uncomfortable with his insensitivity when he would reject me, you know, because that's what this channel can bring up. It's another keynote for the 49 is the butcher. 
you know, like just kill it. <laughs> it's done. This is love, honor, and obey as a stream of marriage as far as where it goes to. And if pe people are not, this is conditional love. This is not unconditional love. This is you shall love, honor, and obey. You can flirt with me, but you can't flirt with anybody else. You know, this energy is very fierce, it can be very fierce because it's tribal. And tribal is about what? Support, being supported. So we have this energy now that's that's communicating and thinking through us, talking through us, potentially, our minds being conditioned to reject failed principles, to reject and perhaps being insensitive in that rejection. So imagine what kind of havoc this wrecks on your love life. If you're normally that cool, calm, collected person, you don't have any problems. And then all of a sudden, boom, this huge emotional wave comes in. And all week, you're just getting triggered and it's feeling uncomfortable. And then boom, the straw that breaks the camel's back just lands and you have this. Oh. Now, some people are very sensitive to that. And instead of having it outward, they force it inward on themselves. And then what happens? Dis-ease, kidney issues. We have issues with the bladder, perhaps, you know, we need to make sure that we allow our energy to flow. So one, I know this is a common thing. People say, feel it to heal it. One of my teachers said that, feel it to heal it. Really allow yourself to sink into the expression of the feeling, but you don't have to do anything because of the feeling. We can witness it. We can watch it. We don't have to take it personally. And that's my personal perspective on this channel. Now let's continue on looking at, we have 219. So this is a really um, powerful channel that we have this week what's going on right now um let's go to venus and we can see venus venus is our standards and our values in relating it's about sociology and here we have the pressure to want or to need this is the gate of wanting the pressure to be sensitized to what other people need the people in your tribe your family your friends people that you hang out with that you consider to be yours mine you know that ownership thing of mine so the first line here that venus is teaching us is about interdependence the pressure of wanting without losing one's identity when being accepted by others so that sounds like a nice bold line and why is it pulled into the exaltation you can see because the sun is there sun pulls this gate into the ease of that line of that gate and that line gate line one because the lines will always have a this and a that so that's what we're going to be experiencing this whole week while the sun is in gate 49 because of that relationship within the channel now let's skip down we're going to look at jupiter jupiter being our personal law and protection this is about Again, the gate of approach, the gate of wanting, pressure to be sensitive to other people's needs. Fifth line here where the Jupiter is, and we're learning about the need to limit personal potential in order to achieve a larger goal. So sacrifice is the line that uh, Ra gave us. Now we're looking at Jupiter in detriment because Jupiter itself is what is creating the energy that is imprinting that channel in that place in that moment. So we know then if we were to look outside at the night sky, we would see that brilliant, beautiful star that looks like a star, Venus, the brightest planet, so shiny, so bright. And next to it would be Jupiter, right, right close by, right next door, because they're conjoined in a gate. And now let's see, sacrifice can fuel a lack of sensitivity. So we see two elements in our transit report in this channel that's speaking to a lack of of sensitivity. So here's the movie that you get to watch. Normally you're cool, calm and collected. You're not emotional. You get all upset. You might have some kind of outburst or inburst and other people might think of you as not being sensitive or overly sensitive. Remember, everyone has everything in the human design body graph. And all of us have our own planets that are sitting there in communication with each other all the time. And we're always in interaction with other people who have their own planets in interaction. And we get to come together and we get to see what this is like. I can remember the first time experiencing this transit reports with awareness and going, Oh my God, like it's so funny to watch and just see because then you don't take problems that arise in relationships, you know, little things that kind of irritate you. Relationships always kind of have those points of uh, contention or 
conflict or crisis, whatever it happens to be, because we're all very different from each other. We tend to be attracted to people who are very different from us. So if you get to that place of recognizing, hey, this energy that moves through me, this is not normal. This is not something that I have to take ownership over. And that's something that I think is very freeing. When you experience the transit from the perspective of, ah, not my fault. That's not to say that you don't go and maybe apologize if you got so angry that you maybe broke something or hurt somebody's feelings by something coming out of your mouth unintentionally that might have hurt them. You always can come back to this place of gratitude and grace for the relationship and the respect and the honoring and the the um, comfort of forgiveness. Yeah, the touch. If If this is the channel that we're dealing with this week, we're going to be very sensitive to touch because this is a stream of sensitivity to touch, touch. The tribe is very touchy feely. The tribe is very sticky, gluey. The tribe is very, you know, mm, huggy, maybe potentially. You know, if it can be helped, things can be helped. If you find yourself into this experience of, you know, neediness, sacrificing, having any kind of pressure or stress that leads you into the waterworks to be able to reach out for touch rather than run away from it. Because I know for me personally, in my experience of being a human and having challenges in this life is particularly emotionally. Um, personally, for me, touch was not my thing. Like I would completely pull away and retreat and run away when in fact, the very thing that might've helped disperse this energy, this thing I was dealing with was reaching out rather than imploding in or exploding out. And so this is one of the things we can learn to get sensitive to. If you have openness in your design where you don't have that activation, notice if you feel a little bit more drawn to being in or with somebody and connected to their touch. So let's go back now to the just now. <sighs> Anything else I wanna tell you about that channel? Nope, but you know, we have other activations that are hanging off of these two centers. So these centers, let's draw back to big picture. When in doubt, zoom out. So the zooming out, we're gonna to go to what is creating all this stress and pressure in our bodies right now. It's the root center, this root center that gives us the drive and stamina to lead a physical, emotional, creative life. Now we have another gate that we're contending with and that is Saturn in gate 41, line five. Uh, this gate, we have the gate of decrease, the gate of contraction. So it's a pressure that is actually pulling back. It's pulling back just like a rubber band. If you were to pull a rubber band, it's so that you have lots more energy to move forward. This is the start codon in our genetics. And in the fifth line, it's called authorization. So Saturn is teaching us discipline, limitation, Okay, that's what, what it's about, discipline and limitation. Saturn is teaching us about the external recognitions of one's potential despite limitations, despite the limitations, despite this fuel for properly channeled energy, properly channeled feelings, despite limitations, and then limitations will initiate the fuel for negative feelings. Can you see how the transits might be, particularly those of you who are very sensitive, influencing you to have some negative feelings, some, some uncomfortable, maybe scary feelings, if, if feelings are a place where you have some wounding. So to give yourself a little bit more slack this week, you know, to know that it's just going to be a sensitive week, kind of like us girls, you know how those girls, we know if we're going to have our period that sometimes <laughs> we might have a little bit touchy feely, or we might have, you know, a little bit oversensitivity. We know that we need to kind of pull back and that, you know, not to take it personally, you know, right now, I just happen to be, it's a chemistry. I happen to be very sensitive emotionally. Everybody just be aware of that. You don't have to worry about being, um, taking ownership of this being your fault or a problem, particularly in relationship. Isn't that the hardest place for us to learn and share and grow together is in relationship with other, other people. And, you know, if you've got a lot of triggering and emotional wounding in that relationship, this might be a week where it's really challenging. Now I'm going to take you to another place that's hidden from us. It provides some misinformation. That's Neptune. Neptune in the gate of grace, we can see here, we have this individual fear, potentially fear of nobody wanting to hear what we have to say, or fear that there's nobody worth 
listening to. It's a fear of silence. And here we have Neptune in line three, the grace, the gate of openness, where it's called the enchanter. Perfected grace is what we're learning if we have this. Now, the possibility for perfect the possibility for perfected openness through the alignment of emotional energy and awareness. On the flip side, an innate openness. So you might be feeling social. Third lines, <laughs> we, we just tend to be more open, open to banging into things. And so here's another third line. Got a couple of third lines there. Maybe making mistakes with your voice of wanting to, because you're emotional, you're feeling moody and sensitive, wanting to communicate with somebody, you got an undefined throat and all of a sudden it's open mouth, insert foot, oops, will come out of your mouth. Didn't necessarily express where you were coming from, from your feelings, yeah? So sometimes, like I said, with this stream, this energy that it is about fuel for sensitivity, you can see that the transit itself is not reaching up to the throat. So unless you have activations that is bringing this energy up, i.e. the 12 or the 36, 35, if you, have, if you don't have uh, these channels here, the 21 and the 40, 37, this energy is not reaching the throat. So you're feeling it inside your body. So it's helpful if you can disperse the energy, channel the energy into something that you enjoy. Maybe you're feeling moody. Some music might help soothe you. That's helpful for anybody who's strongly individual and sensitive to sound. Um, maybe you need a massage. Maybe you need some comfort of touch and a hug and you can ask for that. It's not um, a bad thing to ask for help when you need some help, some support. So not being able to express and then all of a sudden, boom, you back your car into somebody else's car and oops, you get into an ar argument because maybe now they have the 12 and you don't. And all of a sudden, all this frustration and anger and bitterness and whatever disappointment that has been coursing through your veins that didn't get channeled into some kind of expression healthfully now gets channel channeled into an altercation or an argument. So just watch for that. I'm going to talk now about the four. Let's go back up to, oh, happy birthday, by the way, to those of you who are right angle crosses of explanation. And your birthday is today, obviously, or this week, um, the next few days. Right angle crosses of explanation are very brilliant people, very sensitive. Have you noticed? Um, today, if it's your birthday, it's a time for a new cycle new cycle of experience yeah the solar transits always on our birthday or solar return it could be a day before or after always bring us a new cycle so now let's look at this cycle that's happening right now because if you were born on this day today there are um, different variations of this cross but this particular cross where your son was in kali <coughs> excuse me your son in kali and the earth, where we ground and balance that light for the sensitivity to the awareness of principles, is going to be in the gate of youthful folly, the gate of formulization, finding answers, you know, fear of chaos. And here we have the first line of pleasure. So anytime you see a detriment, sometimes it can go like, I don't like that. <laughs> like most people look at detriments and go, why is that like that? There's something wrong there. Something wrong with me. You take it personally. You think, oh my God, I'm not li I'm like this and I don't like it. And why am I like that? Well, this is why. So it's because the earth in that gate offers timing that is not a product of discipline. Exaggerated self-discipline leads to the abuse of pleasure and the potential to recognize, but the urge to force the timing, force the answer, force the awareness potentially. And if you have this in your design, and this is what we're learning right now with this gate activation, Earth in 4.1, learning the, that ultimate pleasure cannot be achieved without perfect timing. Isn't there something truly satisfying about right place, right time, right moment for the communication to happen between two people? If you're not in the mood, not a good time to come together. If you're in the mood, 
to socialize and you're in the mood to be open to somebody else and sensitive with your level of awareness to their needs. And now we can have an expression of finding answers. Maybe you don't normally have that four, but you do have a 63 in your questions machine and you're always doubtful about what's happening in the future. That transit can lead us to have a temporary feeling or um, recognition of, oh, I've got it. I've got the answer now. And that answer means this. And now I'm going to go do that thing because I have the answer. Ooh, be careful. Don't do that. <laughs> Remember not to make decisions from inside of the head about the self when it comes to your decision making strategy. That's not where we place our authority. Okay, so that's that. And what else do we want to look at? Let's look at nodes. Nodes are always very helpful. Nodes are imaginary points in space. They're not an actual physical body being thing. <laughs> it's not, it's a, it's a place. It's not a um, planet or some kind of actual physical thing that the neutrino stream moves through, but it still has a lot of weight. And what does it weight us towards? It pushes us to see things in a particular way. So the perspective of us being available to who has and who doesn't have on the material plane, because this is very strongly about the ownership and the dominance of people who have and maybe the lack where people don't have, because we have a sensitivity here as well, to be able to provide for the needy. So we might be having an experience of looking towards, okay, what do we have to do in order that everybody gets what they need? Second line here is called consensus, the gatherer, gathering together, 45 is the gatherer. And we're learning about gathering together, which is strengthened by an acknowledged common interest. So the material direction through the expression of techniques for the benefit of others, notice tribal language, it's about others and benefits. And then on the other side, the flip side, the refusal to accept the material techniques of others. And that's gonna condition the way that we see so people are going to be arguing about who's right, who's wrong, who's good, who's bad, who has stuff, who doesn't have stuff, who is the best. And let's look at, at what's going on over here. Taming power of the great, the gate of the egoist. This is where we're coming from. And then 45 is where we're moving to as far as our perspective is concerned. Second line in the gate of the egoist is called the lessons of history. On one side, the power of the ego to mature through experience. And on the other side, the failure of the ego to respect experience. So, you know how I, I see this is when people um, who are younger, potentially, you know, um, coming into the world and then looking at the older generation and going, you guys fucked up our planet. Why should we listen to you? You know, like, look at what's going on with our societies and our um, just <laughs> the, the degradation, right? The, just the blame game. So the thing that I want to remind everybody is that no one person is at fault. In fact, none of us are at fault. Okay, none of us did this. However, our awareness of what we are responsible for within our body, following our decision making strategy, being ourselves, loving ourselves, no matter what, that's what we're responsible for. Now, is it possible to love yourself? For me personally, I recognize that no matter what hell you have gone through or maybe what hell that you have experienced in this life, it is possible to get to that place. Am I certain? No, but I have a feeling. And my feeling is that if everybody on this planet were to recognize that nobody out there is personally responsible for anything that happened to you, that you yourself are a magnet or an attractor for the experiences that you have. You know, and you yourself are a combination of the genetic predispositions and, and flows of energy that was created from birth, from birth and three months before your birth. We have these energies that this is our map. This is our movie. Now we are not that map. When you look down at your body graph now, you are not that. You are so much more. When you're sitting in a group of individuals, you know, you're on the train, you're on a plane, you're, you're at class, you're at work, and you're, there's all these people around you. You are more than just that individual that's sitting there. You're just not aware of it. You're, you're part of a global human cell. And when we get into auras, meaning um, in physical contact, in one-on-one -on -one or one, th three to five or larger groups, 
something changes inside of us. Our chemistry changes, our heartbeat might increase, our you know, flows of energy within our own body. And that is not something that is under your control. And I can remember when I was um, younger, you can see I'm going into stories. <laughs> um, when I was younger, I used to be very, very embarrassed to say 10 years ago, even as, as little as um, maybe five years ago, still in the human design experiment. I can remember being terribly ashamed and angry and upset and bitter and disappointed, all the negative emotions you can think of about what my life was like and what I'd experienced. And only recently have I gotten to that shift of recognizing, hey, wait a minute, I'm a spokesperson of my environment. I'm a product of my environment. Is it my fault that I experienced things that maybe I displayed for the entire group to see? I finally got over that thinking it's my fault and there's something bad and wrong with me. And when you can get to that place where you love yourself, your experiences, the things that have happened in your life for what they brought you as a gift of learning and awareness and potential growth, and you don't blame or shame or guilt your fault or fault yourself or your parents or your friends or your family or your government or your freaking planet that we live in. It's a really freeing experience, a really freeing experience. So my intention with these neutrino news is you can use is <laughs> news you can use is to help explain what's going on in the body graph. I can um, go briefly over the openness now and what might happen if this, then that. But my intention is to help you not only learn to speak the language of human design, not only to be able to practice me speaking it to you, but also to give you a set, you know, habit, perhaps. I have the gate five in a couple of different places where the, it's a ritual, it's a routine, it's a pattern. We're all patterns. And if you can start seeing yourself as a pattern, looking at the pattern from within a pattern, you can see that these patterns are not something that we are under control over. I mean, can you erase any of your gate activations? There's a planet there. It imprinted you. Nope, can't do that. Can you change any of the trajectories of the planets and what they're doing and where they're going and how the global humanity is amplifying and potentially distorting it? No, can't do any of that. What you can do is watch the movie. That's it, with awareness or not but know that you're watching a program, that we are programmed, that this program that you live within is not something you can escape from. What you can do is transcend the illusion of Maya that you're so distorted by believing that that is you. And the illusion of Maya is the, the mechanics of the Maya, human design shows the mechanics of the Maya. It's the mind inside of the head that is my mind wants to say putrefied. No, that's not a really pretty picture. Um, petrified. The content of your mind and what's going on inside of your head, depending on how you're filtering this energy stream and those transit activations, is going to be dictated by people you're with or the transits. And when you get that from a visceral standpoint, you don't believe in fault and blame and shame and guilt and regret anymore. You don't have to because it's not your fault. Again, the one thing I wish I could scream from the rooftops and have everybody here, but they wouldn't, <laughs> crazy lady, <laughs> it's not your fault. It's still not your fault. Anything that you think, you know, let, think back to the most sensitive, here come the waterworks, the most sensitive relationship that you've ever had. And you can imagine the screaming. I grew up in a house full of screaming, angry people. Imagine that. And me as a personal perspective child thinking that it's my fault that my parents are screaming or it's my fault that my brother got hurt or my sister got whatever, you know, always taking and internalizing and thinking that that's your fault. And then being able to, at the end of your human design experiment or whenever it comes to you, that you can really own that none of this is your fault. It's the most beautiful gift in the world. And you can love yourself exactly as you are flaws, perceived flaws and all, and not care about what anybody else thinks of you. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to do this with you right now, like broadcast to all of my people and, you know, put myself out there because I used to care very deeply. 
And it's nice to not have a care about what other people think. And it's really freeing. It's really challenging because, hey, anybody with fifth line, and I'm a five on the unconscious on earth, and then I have nine fifth lines in my body graph. There's usually, you know, this, this projection that you put out there and you, you, you tend to have this paranoia or this fear. What are they seeing in me? What do they want from me? I can remember being controlled by that paranoia and that fear. But to align to your decision-making strategy, it takes the weight off of your brain so that you don't have to try and strategize and make a decision. You know what your authority is, where it comes from, what its process is, how it shows up, how it feels. And you can trust that. So that even if your authority says, uh-huh, if you're a sacral generator, it says, uh-huh, you get into something, and your third line, you enter into the right thing to go wrong that helps teach you something profound about the physical and material plane. So let's take quickly, because I don't want to go too far. I have a class at the top of the hour. Through this body graph and talk about what if you have this and the transit has the other side, okay? Briefly, if you've got the 50 and the transit has the other side now, we might have an overdoing it when it comes to preserving, protecting, and caring about our tribe, our people, a spontaneous knee-jerk reaction that is um, overzealous when it comes to taking care of people, okay? So remember, not your fault, not your responsibility, unless your strategy and authority initiates you. Your heart center, the center for our willpower and our courage and control and delivering on promises and being the best. If you have the 44 and you don't have the 26 on the other side of the channel, hi, that's me. You don't have to be the best. You don't in order to do something with your life. It's not about proving or improving yourself. You're perfect as you are. That's one of the things. Another thing I would leave to um, fester, <laughs> contagiate inside of your mind is that you don't have to be the best. You just have to be you. You just have to be yourself. And that's all life is asking of you. Can you be just who you are? And forget what your expectations of what you thought your life should be or what your parents wanted your life to be. What would have made them proud? Hey, you don't have to do that. Now, let's take a look at if you have 21. Hi, I have that one. And you don't have the other side of the channel. Now, we still have heart center. So a lot of willful determination, pressure to promise, pressure to prove. Let's say you don't have the throat center defined. You don't have to attract attention to what people have to do. Oh my God, you guys, my 21, I have this in Venus in line three and, you know, I have the 27 and not the 50. So if, if, if there's this 45 and 50 coming in, all of a sudden I find myself, I, I can remember being on a ski hill, one of those sledding hills, giant sledding hill outside of Mount Shasta and seeing all these people walking up and all these people sledding down. And I'm the one going, get out of the way, because I'm afraid for these people going to get hit by these other people. And I just can't help it. Here we go. You have to move, you know. Just watch out for that. Sorry if I'm getting a little loud. I do tend to um, speak loudly. So remember, if you have an undefined throat center, you're here to wait to be initiated by life. And it's maybe not necessary that you have to say anything because some of us are not consistently speaking or acting or doing. Some of us are just there to wait for the asking, for the recognition, for the invitation, Mutation, metamorphosis, if it's undefined in the throat, happens sporadically, okay? It's not a consistent thing. So you don't have to talk all the time. Allow yourself to take a deep breath and let go of that pressure to communicate, to talk. Is it really important enough to force that energy up to the throat? It stresses you out. It challenges your, not only your vocal cords to yell, but also your thyroid system, yeah? mechanics of the body. So let's look at the head center, head ashna. We have mental inconsistency from the transits, but a lot of pressure. Let's talk about this pressure down here. Pluto, truth, transformation, and psychology. This is about finding inner truth, the inner truth of becoming aware in the now of the big why in the sky. What does that all mean? Why am I here? I need to find inspiration. Who's inspiring? Who has the awareness that maybe I can come to. 
because this is the channel of awareness design of a thinker. If you have the 40 or 24 on one side and the channel has the 61 in the transits on the other side. So you got that loud looping thought pattern inside of your head, trying to figure it out, trying to understand what it means, trying to know, trying to be aware. And it's like, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to remember to do that. And all the stuff, all that blah, blah, blah. And you're staying up way late at night because you can't, you have to figure it out. So you're on the internet. God, please be careful of blue screens. Get some blue screen glasses or something um, if you're late at night on the internet. Because that's going to exacerbate the problem of stimulating your pineal and your pituitaries and your um, circadian rhythm can go all out of whack just because you're amplifying the pressure and you're giving into subjecting yourself to that pressure to, pressure to try and find out the answers to try and figure out why, to try and, okay, so next time I'm going to go this way, I'm going to tell them that my opinion is this, and then maybe it'll be better next time so that we can have peace. Yeah, because I'm afraid of my uh, not having a new idea to be thinking about, and I'm afraid of ignorance, and I'm afraid of not having the answer. So I have to process it. If I can think about it enough, maybe I'll figure it out, and then I'll be certain, and then everything will be okay. That's the thing to watch out for thinking that anything inside of the head can figure anything out for your personal decision-making. Now for other people, brilliant. Your mind is brilliant for me. My mind is brilliant for you, but for making our decisions inside of our head about ourselves, mm -mm. no can do. Okay. So we're at the end of what I'd like to cover. Oh, wait, I, how could I forget one more? Okay. We forgot. I went up the stream. From tribe. Okay, let's look at the last but definitely not least individual uh, activation gate two, which is where Mars is hanging out. And this is loose link lips sync ships. I know this one very well. Uh, I remember having a friend who had this and yeah. Oops, <laughs> I have a 14 on the other side and hearing, um, you know, people's secrets. Thank God I'm a 33 because I can keep secrets really well. Um, and I'm not a 13 on the other side. I'm, I'm holding on to those secrets and sharing the lessons of the past. But now when we're looking at this, what might happen if you're a 14, like I am, have a couple of those, and you don't have the other side, now all of a sudden you perhaps have a recognition or some energy of the vision of where we're going, you know, the higher realms of what, what it is that we're moving towards as a direction, as a place in space, as a vision, maybe for your business, for um, where you want to go, you know, this energy, this higher self, the realm of the higher self. This is the gate of the magnetic monopole. So that gate of the magnetic monopole, you have it, whether you have it defined, undefined, or totally open, everyone has a gate too. But that is where Mars is sitting right now. And Mars, with his immature energy dynamics, Mars with his maturing energy, that is very, you know, forceful, bullish, and energized. It's in the detriment, because my, likely because Mars is doing that. Let's click on it. Yep, Mars. See that? Mars secretiveness or not, or not on the detriment, the inability to keep silent when the opportunity arises for expression. So if you do not have the <laughs> uh, two and you have the 14 on the other side, then you might overdo it. Remember overzealousness, not knowing when enough is enough with work. Gate 14 is a gate of power skills, and it brings a lot of energy for super slaving away. Familiar with that one. And on the other side, if you don't have the G center to find what might happen is now there's this powerful energy that's moving you in a direction that maybe isn't healthy for you to go. But you're thinking, oh, my God, now I have this vision. Now I have my higher purpose. Now I have my calling. I'm moving. I'm going in this direction. And this is who I'm going to be. Yes. I somebody because I have direction now. I have my vision now, <laughs> you know, and then you follow that vision or that direction and then the transit moves and you don't have the vision or direction anymore. You go, what happened? <laughs> Why did I have all this energy to go do this stuff? And then all of a sudden it's like the wind is taken out of your sails. Okay. That's my transit report. Hopefully that's news you can use. We don't have any gate activations in the splenic center. So I'm not going to talk about that today. And I'm just going to pause and see what questions you guys have, if you have anything in the Q&A, five, no, four minutes, and then I will take a break before we go into the next class, which is Living Your Design Awakening as an Experience. Let's see, my friends who have chatted at me so agree. This is making so much 
sense, especially the explosion. Ah, oh, that's what you sent me earlier, Nina. Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Nils. Very welcome, Julia. Thank you, my friends. Thank you, Nina. Okay, so for those of you, it doesn't look like I have any questions. Those of you watching on Facebook, hope you enjoyed the show. This is Neutrino News You Can Use. Nice to be seen, Melanie. Thank you so much for the appreciation. I feel grateful. I feel like I've, I'm starting to turn a corner. Um, I'm really happy that you think that that was brilliant, Gwen. Thank you so much. And if you want to join us live in the room to ask your questions, all you have to do is go over to point your browser to humandesign.live and then click on events and you'll see the upcoming free events that we have here in the community. If you'd like to sign up for a course, we have wonderful guides, not just myself, but other guides as well, taking you through the first step in the human design experience as far as learning to live your design. It's the awakening experience that I'm currently teaching right now. And we have uh, Julie, I believe, is she starting this week? I think she just started a new one. Okay, so take care, my friends. Hope you have a good one. Bye for now. Remember to love yourself and bye-bye.